dawn, Cape Canaveral, Florida. A captain aboard a new kind of ship about to sail on a new kind of ocean, the vast, infinite ocean of space. alien to man. But man is going there. January 27, 1962. In a little while, if all goes well, astronaut John Glenn will be rocketed aloft, born into space on the shoulders of a 20th century atlas, number 109D. At the base of the giant rocket, and 85 feet above in the green room atop the gantry, Engineers and technicians have been busy throughout the night and for many days and nights and weeks and months before. It began the day America decided to put a man into space, created Project Mercury to get him there and safely back. Project Mercury, America's all ahead, all at once, initial step in manned space exploration. October 1958, Project Mercury went to work. Assembled a team of scientists, engineers and technicians to manage America's manned spaceflight programs, to select and train the men who would be the free world's first space pilots, the seven Mercury astronauts. American industry went to work too. In January 1959, McDonnell Aircraft was chosen to produce the Mercury spacecraft. To lift it into orbit, Project Mercury selected the Atlas rocket. The task of modifying Atlas from a military missile to a man-rated orbital launch vehicle was assigned to General Dynamics Astronautics. To the 4,000 Mercury contractors and subcontractors, to all America, human life is priceless. Nothing was left to chance. All systems, each tiny component of each subsystem, every switch, every valve, would have to function perfectly, would have to be the very best that American scientific and engineering know-how could produce before the Mercury Atlas could be man-rated, before it could carry an American astronaut safely into space. Safety, a Project Mercury byword from the beginning. The life of a human being would be at stake. A positive escape mechanism, an escape rocket. Systems to sustain life in space where there is no life to provide oxygen where there is no oxygen, pressure where there is no pressure, and backup systems in case of trouble. Power for the spacecraft with seven miles of electrical circuits. Power for radio and for telemetry. Power for the in-flight control systems, both automatic and manual. Power to fire the reverse rockets that slow the spacecraft and bring it back from orbit. A shield against the blazing heat of re-entry friction. Astronaut, a new word for a new and demanding profession. Rigorous intensive training in new and strange devices. High acceleration and re-entry G loads in the human centrifuge. Then the 
opposite of G loads, no Gs at all or weightlessness. Training and manual control of the spacecraft. Practice roll, pitch, and yaw maneuvers. Survival training. Every conceivable situation, both normal and emergency, was covered. Astronautics, a new science. There were classes for the astronauts in astronomy, meteorology, geophysics, rocketry, astrophysics, celestial navigation, and there was plenty of homework. There was other work, too. The astronauts participated as engineers in every aspect of the program. Each had a special area of responsibility in the development of Project Mercury. There were dozens of flight tests. Tests that confirmed the operation of spacecraft and booster systems in actual flight. And when there were difficulties, no one tried to hide them. Then, when the tests indicated that everything was ready, man was added. May 5, 1961. Astronaut Alan B. Shepard became the free world's first space pilot. All right, uh, lift off and the clock, clock had started. indeed started. Free man was on his way into space. First with Redstone-powered ballistic flights downrange, Shepard in Freedom 7. And on July 25, 1961, astronaut Virgil Gus Grissom in Liberty Bell 7. These Redstone flights paved the way for the Atlas-boosted orbital missions. November 29, 1961. Mercury Atlas flight test number five. A chimpanzee named Enos. Was orbited. Tracked. And recovered unharmed. Confirming that the Mercury spacecraft could sustain life in orbit. One hour after Enos was recovered, Project Mercury named astronaut John Glenn to pilot America's first manned orbital flight. Pre-launch preparations had already begun. Lengthy, detailed checkouts of the spacecraft systems. Tests of the electrical circuits. Tests and retests of the control system. The life support system. Pressure, oxygen, cooling, Outside on launch pad number 14, the Atlas rocket, Atlas 109D, was raised into position. Launch time drew near. The spacecraft was gently placed atop the rocket. This would be a mission of science, a mission of peace. The name of the spacecraft, Friendship 7. Days and nights and weeks and months drew toward a climax. It was January 27, 1962, and the countdown for Mercury Atlas flight number six with John Glenn at the controls was underway. the weather was marginal. While the world watched and listened, Mercury's operation team made the difficult decision. The flight would not go today because of weather.
five hours in the Mercury spacecraft, and it was still no go. But there'd be another day, and there was. February 20, 1962, a day free men will never forget. 2.45 a.m., the countdown was underway again. A feeling of go was in the air. a.m. Mercury doctors agreed the astronaut was go. Medical sensors, tiny devices to constantly monitor John Glenn's physical condition were carefully attached. 4.30 a.m. The count was T minus 120 minutes and holding. John Glenn wriggled into his snug fitting spacesuit. 5.01 a.m the trip to the launch pad. a.m., the long elevator ride up to the 11th deck of the gantry, where Friendship 7 waited. a.m. The count was resumed. From nearby beaches, thousands of visitors watched. And from the press site, a mile and a half from the launch pad, hundreds of newsmen, radio and television representatives broadcasted every drama-packed moment to the people of America and to every nation on Earth. 7.52 a.m. A broken hatch bolt was repaired and the astronaut was sealed inside the spacecraft, alone. But alone only physically. 8.20 a.m. The gantry was rolled back, leaving Mercury Atlas flight number six poised like an arrow, aimed at the heavens. Downrange, the ships and aircraft of the recovery forces were ready. 